Today's topic of discussion is bloodstream infection. What is bacteremia? Bacteremia is presence of focus of disease or may represent transient presence of bacteria in bloodstream without multiplication. So what is bacteremia? Presence of focus of disease or may represent transient presence of bacteria in bloodstream without multiplication. Next, septicemia. It also called as sepsis. What is sepsis? Occurs when active bacterial multiplication or bacteria, bacterial product that is toxin causes harm to host cell. So what is sepsis? Occur when active bacterial multiplication or bacterial product such as toxin causes harm to host. So when there is multiplication, when there is multiplication, it to produce toxin is called as septicemia. Without multiplication, this condition name is called as bacteremia. So, uh, toxin production, septicemia, multiplication name is called as bacteremia. This bacteremia are classified into three categories. First one is transient. Second one is continuous bacteremia. Third one is intermittent uh, bacteremia so first we want to look at uh, transient bacteremia this one may occur spontaneously with uh, minor event uh, like brushing of teeth or chewing of food etc so this one transient occur spontaneously with minor events like brushing of teeth or chewing of food etc. Second one is continuous bacteremia. It is associated with bacterial endocarditis. Endocarditis. Then endovascular infection and septic shock where in organism are released into bloodstream at a fairly constant rate. So, what is continuous associated with bacterial endocarditis, endocarditis, endovascular uh, infection and septic shock where organisms are released into bloodstream at a fairly constant rate. Third one is intermittent bacteremia intermittent bacteremia are seen with causative agents of meningitis pneumonia pyrogenic arthritis and osteomyelitis recovered from blood early in course of this disease so what is intermittent uh, this one seen with causative agent of meningitis pneumonia Pyro, uh, pyrogenic arthritis and osteomyelitis recover from, recovered from blood early in course of this disease. Next coming to clinical uh, presentation of bloodstream infection. Two main categories of bloodstream infection. Two main categories of bloodstream infection, they are intravascular and extravascular. Intravascular occur uh, within cardiovascular system. This condition will occur within cardiovascular system. Extravascular uh, are those entering blood circulation, those lymphatic from the site of infection. So, this one entering blood circulation, those lymphatic from site of infection. Intravascular occur within cardiovascular system. This one entering blood circulation from the site of infection. Next, uh, sign and symptoms of septicemia. It causes fever, hypothermia with chills. Fever, hypothermia with chills. Hyperventilation. Subsequent respiratory alkalosis due to hypothermia. 
per ventilation oxygen carbon dioxide released due to respiratory alkalosis so here acid eliminated fever hypothermia with chills hyperventilation then it causes septic shock is characterized by fever acute respiratory distress shock renal failure and intravascular coagulation so what are the signs and symptoms fever hypothermia with chills hyperventilation septic shock renal failure and intravascular coagulation then pathophysiology of shock septic shock is mediated by activated mononuclear cells producing cytokine so septic shock mediated by activated mononuclear cells producing cytokines like tumor necrosis factor and interleukin so septic shock mediated by mononuclear cells it producing cytokines like a tumor necrosis factor and interleukin then gram negative bacteria release entotoxin gram negative bacteria release entotoxin uh, which is lipopolysaccharide it producing entotoxin is uh, lipopolysaccharide the core of lipopolysaccharide is made up of lipid a this lipid a which mediate systemic response lipid a which mediate systemic response including fever activation of complement and sudden clotting factors sudden clotting factors then gram positive bacterium produced exotoxin which has similar response these are the response also it will cause next one is etiology causing agent of blood stream infection various bacteria fungus virus protozoa causes blood stream infection first we want to look at bacteria what are the bacteria causes blood stream infection various bacteria staphylococcus coagulate negative staphylococcus then beta hemolytic streptococcus enterococcus streptococcus pneumoniae Uh, then salmonella species e coli proteus pseudomonas brucella these are the bacterium responsible for blood stream infection next virus then what are the viruses causing blood stream infection hiv uh, hiv epstein barr virus and cytomegalovirus then fungus candida cryptococcus hakaidiotoimitis histoplasma capsulatum then plastomyces mucor species aspergillus species these are the different uh, fungus will causes blood stream infection then protozoa plasmodium trypanosoma uzeria and lova lova these protozoa one causing blood stream infection then a diagnosis a laboratory diagnosis of blood stream infection um the here firstly we will collected blood, blood sample blood can be taken in the case of children 1 to 5 ml in the case of adult uh, 7 to 10 ml for adult three samples of blood are taken um at interval of 24 hours for infective endocarditis so we collect so blood taken in the case of children 1 to 5 ml in the case of adult 7 to 10 ml 24 or interval three samples we will take then culture culture is performed in brain heart infusion broth then trifecase soy broth then thioglycolate broth so three different type of broth we are using brain heart infusion broth then tripti case soy broth then thioglycolate broth so after culture 
it is incubated two weeks it can be two type of growth one is positive growth another one is negative growth in the case of positive growth subculture uh, media needed what are the subculture media like blood agar medium meccan ki agar medium chocolate agar medium positive growth have i uh, have identification and antibiotic sensitivity needed in so in negative growth for detect this organism make a cell culture is performed this chlamydia is not respond for culturing so detecting this organism we are using make a cell culture is performed m c c o y next toxin it producing two type of toxin exotoxin and endotoxin serological diagnosis we are using uh, immunofluorescent assay complement fixation test enzyme immunofluorescent assay so serological test include immunofluorescent assay complement fixation test and enzyme immunofluorescent assay we are using other miscellaneous test for diagnosis of bloodstream infection total count complete blood count leukocytosis here increasing uh, amount of wbc the uh, second erythrocyte sedimentation rate esr is elevated third one is c reactive protein is detectable urine we taken for culture then chest x ray is performed then ecg ecg echocardiograph then deduction for deduction of vegetation then deduction of bacterial toxin two type of toxin exotoxin and endotoxin these are the miscellaneous for um, test for diagnosis of blood stream infection next identification colony morphology then microscope gram staining then biochemical reaction then antibiotic sensitivity test under we are using grubi boyer disk method then mic minimum inhibitory concentration mbc minimum bacterial concentration so uh, these are the test we can used for diagnosis of blood stream infection this is the approach for diagnosis of bloodstream infection so this video we are discussing uh, bloodstream infection in this one uh, some terms we want to know what is bacteremia and what is septicemia septicemia have another name sepsis then three type of bacteremia transient continuous and intermittent then clinical presentation uh, intravascular and extravascular then sign and symptoms then pathophysiology after that gram positive bacterium gram negative bacterium etiology what are the bacteria what are the fungus what are the virus protozoan causing bloodstream infection then diagnosis we are using culturing method then Uh, serological technique then other miscellaneous test then identification then antibiotic sensitivity method thanks for watching